okay uh so good morning guys uh am, am i audible hello yes 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 yes, yes. okay yes, we can hear you. okay yeah so my name is akash so i have more than six years of expertise into cloud and devops and i am certified in all three major public clouds that we use i am a solutions architect in aws gcp cloud engineer certified and also Azure or admin certified, and I basically work work into CI/CD implementation, and then infrastructure as a code using Terraform and TerraGrant, and also uh, providing design and architecture in my industry. Right, <clears throat> so that's a brief background of myself. So yeah, so just coming to the point, right? So today we will be going through uh, the GCP. Uh, platforms demo class and what we would be doing ahead in the course i'll give you a brief overview and then uh, we will take the q and a's right so just before i start right uh, if anyone to introduce themselves on, on just what they do or uh, what where they stand in terms of any cloud providers or what is understanding of gcp that would give me an I fair idea right from where to start and how to help you right so if anyone wants to volunteer here hi i am samrat hello am i audible yeah yeah samrat go ahead yeah uh, actually i am a working uh, professional i am into logistics i am working mm -hmm. uh, in this logistics uh, since uh, 13 years so uh, i would like to come to it from uh, non it to it so so is there any chance that we can um, you know come into it in this uh, tenure like in, in this age uh, because i am 36 years old now um, mm -hmm. so i would like to you know migrate to it from non it uh, and we are i am from uh, non technical uh, you know uh, qualification like you know i have completed my bsc in botany zoology and chemistry um so would it going to work to me okay uh, so i'll answer your question in two parts okay so if you say if you want that transition from non it to it yes it is possible yes. and it is and i think you have cho if you you have chosen a correct domain to make that transition as of now because the industry is mostly moving towards it and the second part to your answer i'll answer you at the end of the uh, this session right so it will help you give you a more clarity right and i'll give you a few uh, physical examples also why this is this can be done okay so just hold on for the end of the session uh, okay. give and the, coding your... is required like you know is is it like coding is there in gcp do we need to do coding because i don't know java and python also no i won't it, it is not required as of now because uh, yeah no i would say but the okay. little bit which you require you will be given inputs and you will be taught over here right so that you don't have an hassle so there are i mean just to give you an idea there are multiple paths to learn right so if if i give you the coding aspect at the very first it will be very difficult for you right so as we go along uh, you will be able to understand and once you start understanding then it will become relevant to you right what you have to go ahead with right so yeah oh. okay mm -hmm. mm, anyone else yes, yeah hi no. Zaheer here okay uh, uh, myself working in java from past uh, many years uh, actually i've been working I worked with aws also for a little bit uh, mostly into monolithic application i have with and uh, not any cloud deployments recently i worked with aws for some part and from past six months currently i jumped into gcp platform project so it was too mm -hmm. sophisticated that i am using cloud sql big queries uh, all the computer engines but too much sophisticated that everything is pre-configured and uh, i can say very very big player it will be compulsory using gcp only so may maybe i'm planning to jump to other project for other project i need the gcp but uh, certification they are asking and uh, some development mm -hmm. skills on gcp so that's why yeah. I'm just looking for. good one okay i understand <clears throat> yeah. 
okay yeah anyone else or uh, thanks zahir thanks samrat yeah thank you yeah anyone else or yes no uh, we all have your breakfast guys <laughs> because there's not much of inputs coming in <clears throat> yeah we all okay. had uh, yeah lad uh, that's good then but fine uh, i'll uh, let's start i'll park in between to have a bit of questions and then we again go ahead right <clears throat> okay so my is my screen visible to you guys yes okay uh, so this course is more, mostly about gcp right or uh, google cloud platform so just to give you a brief uh, understanding of where had this come from so this has been developed by google uh, in the year of uh, 2008 approx in the month of april so it has been a long journey for them now nearly 15 years and this platform is mostly built uh, by uh, using many programming language, I would say, uh, using Python, Java, Go, C++, and Ruby. And uh, just a heads up, you don't have to learn all these programming languages because it is uh, the product on which it is built. So you, it is not that you have to learn everything. But just to give you an understanding, and this is the programming language that they have used to uh, build up this platform, right? <clears throat> Okay, and just uh, also uh, this GCP platform has started with 10 to 12 services, just catering to a uh, few fields like storage and compute. So I'll come to what is compute and storage, but just to give you a higher level, right? It has started with compute, storage, and then the networking part. And later it moved as it as these went along, it moved along with uh, other services like cloud functions, cloud run, uh, taking up Kubernetes as a platform. So it has its own product of GKE. Then it, as uh, Zahir was mentioning, big data, right? So it has big data, big query, and then on other, to serve other databases of Cloud Spanner, Cloud SQL, and like that, right? So it has now more than 200 plus services to uh, use and solve real time problems using those, right? So this is on a higher level of what GCP Cloud will give you and what we will be learning in this course. So mainly we will be learning the key features, the products that I just mentioned, and it's just on a few that I could mention because there are more than 200, as I said. So taking up 200 names would take up most of our time, right? So yeah, so we will be focusing mainly on, we will be taking it up into like say divisions as we'll start with compute, then storage, then networking, then IAM, and then uh, then the load balancer. And likewise, we will go along, right? And that is how we start. And then the, we, I'll also help you into thinking of how to design a web, web three tier solution or what you will have to take the approach when you are trying to uh, build a CI CD pipeline using G GCP's own cloud build, right? So that is the cloud build <clears throat> CI CD tool that GCP uses, right? Uh, or what is the approach you need to take whether you are trying to decide a database, right? Whether you have a transactional data to uh, go ahead or whether you have uh, analytics data to take in, right? So which is the services you will be using and how to uh, design and implement that service, right? Using cloud solutions. And also managing is again an uh, added part that you have to also take care when you're working in the industry because you'll be hired for that, right? So ensuring the security compliance uh, and the performance, right? Is again a major factor that comes into the picture when you are working into any of the cloud providers. So yeah, so this is also the part that we, I'll be covering in. So what are the principles that you need to take while you are doing the performance? Right? Are you taking up the right tense when you are designing a compute engine? Have you t given the users the correct IAM? So what is IAM? I'll just let you know. But just give if give you a high level. So in that aspect, I'll help you to. Uh, we will do hands-on as well uh, in every step. 
so that uh, you get to learn and you have your own doubts when you are working on it otherwise it does not make much sense that i do it on my screen and you just follow it does not help right so uh, you will be doing it on your screen most of the times and then i'll be helping you and guiding you across right that that makes the uh, sessions and the more interactive i would say right so this is on 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 the thing that we will be learning in this course on a higher level and just moving forward this course is mainly structured uh, according to the syllabus that we have for uh, gcp's cloud engineer that's my mostly gcp admin i would say so whatever we will be learning over here will help you to ace that exam in in near future so yeah and that is uh what you can expect of learning in this course right okay i uh, just uh before i come to gcp right uh we we all know that cl we cloud and devops are two hand in gloves now in the present industry right and each of them are dependent on the others when i say devops devops is basically the philosophy right which comes under different aspects be it the build build be it the deployment be it the monitoring and uh, same as uh, cloud we have all these aspects right so basically we can uh, take a leverage of those devops principles using uh, the cloud providers right so <clears throat> just before i go into what is gcp what is cloud computing right uh, so this is the buzzword right now in the industry right in the it industry i would say so it's just uh, if in one word if i want to say is say you is it's a on demand uh, service means that in earlier days if you had to run an application or if you had to store something let's take an example of you your you uh, people who have joined here right so if let's say you have to store a uh, 10 gb of movie data so what you used to do you used to go out in the market get a hard disk or an <coughs> sorry <coughs> take an ssd buy an ssd then come back and then store your data right and then let and then let and take an uh, let's take an horizon of one year right in one year let's say your hard disk or your ssd which you have bought right had maxed out you have used 10 gb of your data now what you do again do you go out and buy right that is what the industry had been following right well if if the consumption is more they used to add up but there's a problem to it right let's say you don't re don't require this data now right now what happens is your hard disk or your ssds is now wasted right your money is basically wasted you have a device which you don't have any use right so what cloud helps us is it gives you that on demand service right what they tell you is you come to me you use whatever you want and once you are done you can go off right so it helps you to pay as you go right you only pay for what you use so this is the reason why it's a i won't say it's a most dominant reason but this is one of the predominant reason why people are switching from on premise or old industry standards to cloud right just to give you another thing right if you think of the uh, job market or where the industry is moving into i was just reading a few blogs and data right so in the first quarter of 2023 it is estimated that the uh, the consumption of cloud market is more than 63 billion right and only 30 30% has been utilized <clears throat> by the cloud providers or the industry has transitioned from the on premise to cloud right so there is 70% uh, use cases or <clears throat> uh, industries yet to do right so there is a huge scope of uh, people who know this technology right and uh, if you are known if you know this technology you'll be getting uh, getting into good positions and uh, definitely pay is one of uh, another aspect that you can also look into right based on your knowledge and expertise going ahead right so yeah this is on the uh, uh, thing on uh, wh what is cloud computing apart from that the cloud does provide you with other features also like uh, cloud security is one of the aspect uh, which which they do provide you like it helps you using different services it does help you to provide uh, multiple security parameters does it protects you from ddos attack you can control 
uh, with some few clicks you can control whom to allow coming into into your cloud clusters and then there are multiple other paid services uh, firewalls you can set up or uh, how to do the service discovery whom to allow and all those right so we will be having dedicated sessions or uh, into this so i am just not taking much of your time and, and just giving a higher level understanding right and also <clears throat> The other major thing is cloud automation, right? So we, we all know that we have done with the ages of doing uh, simple clicks and then uh, repeating it one after the other, right? It does not solve the problem, right? Let's say if you have team of three, then it does solve. But when you have team of 50 or 100, and when you do the task repetitive, you have to automate it, right? So basically uh, in cloud automation, if I take off one of the major uh tool that is now getting used is terraform so uh, that is uh, used into infrastructure automation and uh, we, at the end of the course maybe i'll touch touch upon on few uh, uh resources on how to use terraform on gcp uh but this would be mostly uh, this course will be mostly on to gcp's cloud platform administration and setting up and design right not much on terraform but yes terraform will be touching out uh, at the end of mostly at the end so that you also get a fair understanding of how to uh interact this with uh the infrastructure code tool right and apart from terraform as terraform is cloud agnostic because you can use that across multiple clouds it's not divide i mean not even clouds you can also use it on on-premise or other systems but google cloud does give you one of its own infrastructure as a code tool known as deployment engineer to do the same uh, automation right but that is not much used right now if, if i have known so terraform is the most used so yeah that that i'll give you an understanding of how to do that apart from that right <clears throat> there are multiple other advantages which why we uh, are using cloud because uh, we, you we can scale rapidly scale and what do i mean by rapidly scale is let's say uh we let's say let's take an example of the amazon's uh, uh retail e-commerce website right that we use right let's say uh it is it is made designed in such a way that it is expecting 1000 of users on every day right now if i tell you uh, on a festival day let's say 25th uh, december right the traffic has increased from 1000 to 10000 users right so what how does the amazon people uh, tackle this scenario right so there can be multiple ways we can do it right and cloud does help you again in, in that prospect of scaling it up right so based on the users you can scale the amount of uh, servers that are running in your backend and again when uh, when the i would say the traffic or the amount of users that are hitting that uh, website is down and again you can scale it down so we have very good terms to define it as one is horizontal scaling and one is vertical scaling so what are these i uh, we, when we go deep into the course i'll let you know and how to do that scaling right that again is the biggest thing that you need to learn uh, when you are learning uh, the gcp a cloud engineer or any of the cloud providers so this is the thing that we'll be going into whether we have to scale in or scale out or whether we have to scale up or scale down so this is one of the majorly asked also uh question in when you will be facing in, in into your interviews right so people will get confused so uh, we, people will be thinking okay scale in and scale up they do come into the same aspect right they do also do sound similar but no there, there are subtle differences between the two right and you need to know when you're working into devops and cloud these things and 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 on not only knowing it theoretically but you have to also explain it how you can achieve this practically right using the uh, cloud services that is again the most important thing that people are looking out in the industry right so yeah this is one of the thing then and then then apart from that it has a wide range of data centers into multiple regions so what it does help is what is data center it's just on a higher level if i tell you it's just where they store your data 
okay you don't have physical access to it you just have to uh, mention let's say if you want to store your data in india you can there's a re region for them you can only select it and then your data is stored into the india regions what it helps is that's the major thing that uh, you need to be concerned with is the latency or the throughput the i know these are a bit higher terms for people who are switching from non it to it but you will get to know uh, where, what is latency what is throughput in just one word on a high level if i tell you it's the speed of access right let's say uh, just to give you an example if i want to travel from delhi to mumbai right there are multiple ways i can travel right i can go via bus that would be the hardest way i can understand but yes that's a medium that you can you use there's again trains super fast trains that we can use and again uh, there are airplanes that we can use right so what i am trying to mean over there is is the speed right if you have to let's say communicate between if you have to physically go there right let's say how do you go there and how do you take the speed travel right how do you take means what is the least time that it is taking to travel from one place to another so that is what i mean by throughput and latency so how quick is your data fetched from these data centers and given back to you right so let, let's say if i have a server in india and my customer or my user is also trying to access the data from india so the speed in which he can access a the data is very fast right but if my server is again sitting in in the us right or usa i would say then there might be some hindrance right there might be some uh, network issues or something might happen and there might be uh, uh, latency right what i call it over here and the throughput will be very less right i'm and and in a physical eye you won't be able to distinguish much because this happens in nanoseconds but there will be if let's say too many people are trying to access there is uh, the probability of going down on it right and then uh, and there, apart from that it is a broad network i already mentioned and uh, apart from that cost is again a very big uh, thing that we need to consider while we are using it in the industry right that there is a, a difference between a capex and an opex uh, what is capex and opex opex is operational expense and capex is trade capital expense so we can bring down our operational expense to a huge level so that is again one of the advantage that we get and it is a, a global thing so it helps into a, your disaster recovery and uh, your other services right so yeah and apart from that uh, gcp also does give you very good uh, cloud console it's very sophisticated i would say and it's very easy to use when you are first starting to use it and you'll basically love it uh, what i had seen is it's better than i would say microsoft azure's azure is a bit confusing but uh, gcp is, has given you a very good cloud console to use it is very much segregated and sophisticated so you have uh, it will be easier for you to understand and use it and I, and also you will have the cli support right it, it does use g cloud and for uh, it has a different flavor of support for cloud storage and also when you are using bigquery it, it uses a different cli we will when we are learning these things we will be uh, uh, helping you to understand okay someone has wants to ask anything i was going to park only hello anyone has questions up till now please go ahead i'll park for 2 3 minutes to take a few questions and then we again go ahead because it's lot of data that is that will be going into right now so i don't want to bombard you with so many things yeah go ahead if anyone has anything to ask hello anyone uh, any question uh, it's not only you ask me on gcp it can be on any cloud or any other devops things or anything coming to your mind related to uh, the course or related to any devops questions you can go ahead hello uh, yeah, hello this is zahir uh, and uh, i have uh, one question actually most mm -hmm. have been working in the development of uh, java applications uh, so uh, we already had a team for uh, deployments 
for the past five six years i am not even looking into deployment so just uh, now i want to move into that place also as experience is flowing so is this going to this course going to cover an infrastructure part you said uh, like yes uh, uh, scaling scale out you said you like vertical yep. origin, so. so yes yes so is it going to cover all the infrastructure modules like that? Yes, each and everything. So if I tell you on a high level, so first we will be working on VMs, then the managed instances that covers up your scale in scale out, right? And then if, if when you go ahead, right, deployments is other parts of also it, right? What is a blue green? What is a canary? How do you do it on a GKE, right? Uh, that is yeah. Google Kubernetes engine. Actually, but yeah, we, we we are using, but uh, I am not involved. That's why I just joined. Uh, Yes, so I, I'll be helping you to understand those things and how like, you will uh, be setting setting that up. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, like uh, how to manage cost management kind of thing. Like yes, to... correct. Yeah. I, I do have slides for that cost management is optimization, I would say. It's yeah. one of the biggest thing that you need to do. Yes, we will be touch basing on all of the things in this course. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Any other persons who are trying to ask? I was seeing. Yep. Uh, hi, Akash. This is Suya. So, working as a data warehouse uh, engineer. So, I'm. I'm expectation is like, uh, are we going to cover any ETL kind of uh, stuff? We have like data fusion, data proc, uh, a lot of uh, like other services is there, right? So, are we going to cover as part of uh, this course those services also? So. Uh, specific to ETL, if you say we won't touch base much deep into it, but uh, database and warehousing is a part of this. Like, uh, if I take a take a take it take a few service names that Cloud Spanner or uh, Big Table or BigQuery. These are the or uh, Data Store, Firehouse, Firestore. I would say these these would be covered. Yes, but not much on ETL things because this is on the GCP admin side, right? Yeah. Okay, you but are going you to have. I'm sorry, go ahead. So maybe you're going to cover like uh, architect level and admin level, most of the concept, not to like uh, uh, data engineering, whatever we are looking for that those concepts, right? No, because this is an intermediate uh, course, so we won't go much advanced into data warehousing or uh, yes, data engineering. But yes, uh, as I said, it is an intermediate course and not an advanced level, right? It, it would be mostly on infrastructure and then design right yes okay so and also we're going to cover like uh, cloud run cloud scheduling and we have yes. like some schedulers is there uh, cloud scheduler is there and also we have the some astronomers is there so i'm doing like initial kind of uh, like some pocs so mm -hmm. uh, so you are going to cover these like these kind of configurations and space creation and everything right yes yes see to your answer your question yes when you say cloud run and space administration yes but there are as i said right there are more than 200 plus services so if any extra uh, feature you want you your uh, company or you are doing some pocs we can take it up at the later part of the courses right when we have covered most of the 80 percent of the course then we can cater to your individual requests uh, on in any service that you want to learn or anything else you have, want to uh, administer and design right that we can take but yes as i said preliminarily we will be mostly focusing on uh, the admin parts and the infra part and then yeah and then we can go deep dive into specialized or individual services that you want to also learn yeah okay got it thank you mm -hmm. yeah thanks Okay, uh, let me just go ahead and then again, I'll take up questions uh, because it will otherwise take up a lot of time, right? <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead. So just an overview of uh, uh, what you can expect and what GCP does give you. Uh, so it can be, if I generalize it, it, it is basically uh, segregating into compute storage uh, big data and analytics and then networking and security right it's if you take in from a higher 10,000 feet level this is how the mostly the broader uh, service or i won't say service broader 
uh, names that are given or jargons that are given by the cloud industry, right? So uh, we will be covering most of the tools or the services that fall under them. Like in computes, we'll be learning uh, VMs and then auto scaling and then uh, how can you save it with spot instances or preemptable uh, instances that we call here and then how to scale up scale down is again managed unmanaged uh, we have all those then apart from that storage is again one of the bigger aspects that cloud does solve for you so we will be taking into uh, cloud storage which uh, storage platform to use and how to do that auto configuration right let's say you don't want to have your data fetched in 30 days right then you need to move it into some other uh, storage class right because that will again save cost for you right so how to do that transition and how to set up those conditions i would say to do that transition so in a way it is the doing a, a cost optimization and again uh, giving you a robust uh, or scalable storage module right for your thing so these are the nitty gritties that we will be covering also uh, and we will be covering definitely and then a big data and analytics i as we yes again to answer this question uh, we will be learning how to set up and implement it but we won't go much deep into how our data engineering works or how uh, data warehousing aspects of it because these are advanced levels and these are another mode of learning that you need to uh, go beyond this right so we will be touch basing upon each services mostly how to set that up and then how what to use and which use case which one you need to follow let's say if you are having a oltp light uh online transactional data that what what is the database service that you need to use in gcp right whether you use a cloud spanner or whether you use a cloud sql or if you have analytics data with whether you use a big table or a big query right these things you will be able, able to understand what to use and uh, if you know okay i will be using this then how do i need to do that setup right that becomes most important right only not knowing the theoretical part will help you uh, go ahead right and then the biggest uh, thing that comes also is networking and security the backbone of anything or any uh industry which you go in any of the cloud providers is you have to set up your network first maybe be it on the vpcs what is a subnet what is a, a subnet uh, what is a vpc what is how do you set up a cidr range you have must have seen right uh, there's ips that are given to it uh, given to any services that you use how are those ips taken what is how do you define that range right that you have to un have an understanding you cannot give uh, service with 1000 IPs, which where, where it will be only using five to six IPs that again over utilization of resources, right? So how do you do that mathematical calculations? I'll be covering that and again if, just to give you a higher understanding if you have to connect two different uh, VPCs how you do that what is a shared VPC? That's again a new term you will be a new not new term they have introduced in GCP But yes, what is the functionality of it and how you do that? again cloud vpn uh, cloud vpn is nothing if uh, just if you want to communicate with your let's say aws services with uh, a gcp service right you have to set up that network uh, from where how the traffic picks up from there and how it is transmitted into your gcp right so vpn does come helpful over there and again it also helps you to connect through your there on premise and with your uh, cloud services right and then security part if i tell you there are firewalls there's an im uh, identity access and management okay what do you mean by i am it is just let's say i am an user a i don't want want to get i want to only use cloud run or gke right so the admin will never give me other permissions of let's say admin right he will restrict me to only the services that i require access to and i'll be uh, doing work on right so i am will help you into these kind solve these kind of situations right so we'll be going deep into this when once we start learning it right uh, apart from that there are a few key features of gcp uh, just to tell you an understanding of kubernetes engine that's the mostly used uh, where, where we deploy our microservices because someone was saying that if you do a microservice deployment so people are mostly using uh, kubernetes as a orchestration engine so gcp will does provide you a managed uh, orchestration engine in the name of uh, gke so now there are two parts to it i'll help you set up and do everything uh, how to do that setup in G gcp and on gke right 
but uh, i'll also show you the fundamental levels of how you when once you have set that up how do you run a deployment and how to just uh, run a service but we won't go much deep into again kubernetes that's again a heads up uh, so if you have any questions i can answer but we won't go much deep into kubernetes when we are learning gke right so that's again a thing uh, we also have cloud run so that's a smaller version of running your docker instances we'll also uh, see what is cloud run and how we can do blue green and uh, canary over there what are the advantages you get uh, over there we definitely will be seeing into then there is uh, cloud ai platform is what does it mean is how where there are few specific engines that you can use to run your ml models on gcp and gcp does give you those uh, high defined or uh, machines to run your gcp models because you cannot run it onto a lower uh, spec uh, vms so TPUs and GPUs they do provide you and that does help you to run most of your ML model workloads again cloud functions is an e event driven what I mean is serverless so again it's a new term for you maybe what is serverless is uh, if I tell you in one word you don't again in cloud also you don't have to manage your resources right that's what uh, the power of serverless is right so yes we will be uh, learning about all those things and then iot uh, core is uh, how do you set up iot right even driven uh, things right uh, what what is cloud how do you do that with cloud firestore how do you monitor this again monitoring is again a bigger aspect that you also need to learn because not only setting your things up if things goes down or there is a trouble how do you fix that that's again one of the key aspect we will be uh, covering up in this course right okay just moving forward uh, this is again on the same uh, thing on a higher level of architecture we have the foundation layer if i talk about foundation layer so that's basically falls under uh, if you if you know the osi model right there it's it's the it, if, if you def, uh, know the OSI model and if we define it into IAS, PaaS, and SAS, so infrastructure as a service falls under the foundation layer. Or what I mean by that is, let's say we setting up the networking, the storage, the servers. These fall into the foundation layers, right? Because to do anything or run any or applications, you have to first set those things up, right? So this is the foundation layer, and then. We have the security layer. You have to have a robust uh, authorization and authentication so that uh, you are not spammed and you don't have other external attacks on your application. And then comes the application or de development layer, right? Uh, where you will be doing your deployment and how you want to do your deployment. So again, a cloud run and a cloud app engine is again one of the things that you can uh, use when we are doing the application deployment right so yeah uh, going ahead a uh, few services to name i was already naming it so if you want a few services that comes on most predominantly used are uh, if you talk about compute it's compute engine com kubernetes engine app engine app engine in again, again serverless uh, you don't have to much do over there but it gives you added features of canary deployment blue green deployment if you have to split your traffic between two different versions uh, you can do that right and then there is cloud storage and backup right uh, if you talk about global storage you can use cloud storage it, it is mostly your things are stored in forms of objects then you have cloud sql for your database storage and cloud spanner again it's a serverless and auto uh, auto scalable database and then you uh, you have your security and uh, networking part right okay uh, so few things that we will be focusing mostly on designing and implementing cloud while we are designing and implementing it so it will be mostly uh, we will be focusing on uh, well architecture framework so what i mean by that we will be focusing first on the foundation layer and then the security and then the storage and then uh, the application layer so we will be um, as in a jargon term we tell tell it as a three-tier architecture we will, uh, so when we are designing it we will be following this 
again balancing cost with performance is one of the most uh, predominant thing that uh, we will be also focusing on because let's say you are working in an industry where the first layer is already built right it is uh, well structured and architected but you are having troubles with your performance because every time you will be not having a client where you have we will be doing in the self uh, design right you will be doing an enhancement or optimization so this skill will help you again over there right how to balance cost with performance right you as i was telling you one in one of the scenario right you can't use uh, 1000 ips for an application which will be utilizing only five ips so that's over utilization and that will again cost you right more so you have to do the have to learn how to do that using multiple ways first is monitoring then is cost calculation then is uh if you let's say there are again multiple other models i don't want to go much deep into this let's say you, there's a commitment type of approach right you can tell gcp that okay i'll be using your servers for less next three years right what is the best price that you can give me these type of things are there so they can give you a most 70 percent of your uh cost savings well well when you are doing a schedule dot or, or on 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 as a on demand uh instances right these are the things that you need to understand of how to do that right and this will be again uh helped you and taught to you right because these these are the main, main nitty gritties when you're also sitting for your interviews it will be asked you upon and when you're again working in the industry these these skills will get uh help you uh, go ahead right and uh there's a part three to it what i that's devops and automation so as i was telling you devops and cloud does go hand in hand with both of them so how do you automate that uh using either terraform or ansible or uh if i talk about devops tools like ci cds gcp does give you cloud build so how do you write your ci cd pipelines uh over here so we will be touch basing upon how do where so like git you have github or gitlab to store your source code right so what is the service that you use over here in gcp to solve that scenario right so they, they give you artifact uh, storage right so uh, these things will be covered yes going ahead i've covered most of the things from here so infrastructure provisioning will be one of the first part then event monitoring and alerting and then uh, cost optimization or performance optimization i'll just go uh, yeah so now is the thing that uh, you might be thinking that why should we learn uh, gcp right and why not other cloud providers that's one of the burning questions that might be coming to your mind so uh with uh i, I also have a chart later okay let me just go to that quickly Okay, so this is one of the uh, Q1 quarters mar market research done, right? Uh, it's data is up to Q4, uh, but I also had the uh, Q1 data for to, to 2023, right? So as I was telling, we have a 63 billion market uh, cloud utilization or cloud market, right? 63 billion is a huge number. And only out of that, 30% migration has already been done and rest 70% is still left, right? And uh, why GCP if I tell you first is GCP does give you a very competitive price advantage when you are running your services They do cost you right so GCP does give you a very good price because it it's a new predominant player in the market Apart uh, uh, apart from Amazon and Microsoft. Yes, you can you, you can think of that uh, AWS and my uh, Microsoft have the upper hand but if you can see the trend of GCP if you see q4 2017 and how far it has come up right so it, it was nearly four to five percent and now it has come to 20, 12 to uh 13 percent right and and this curve is very steep right and no one player can dominate this uh, space right so you learning gcp because uh, what with my understanding and when i learned it right uh the advantage or what I can say is the trained professionals is not there much into this cloud, right? And this cloud is picking up because uh, it has the capability of uh, give you first is they give you very good price models. And the second is it has a very good capability of running your ML workloads, right? And we all know that we are moving into a phase of AI and ML, right? So G we're using GCP, the new when new industry or new organizations are trying to do that migration they are picking up mostly gcp first to do run their workloads right so you 
getting an upper hand is you being you know the knowledge and if you know the knowledge the amount of uh, i would say requirements there in the market is huge but the trained professionals there is less for this amount of this cloud right yet in the market so it's a first come first uh, service i would say because if you learn it quick and if you know the nitty gritties of it the more you can grow in your career and let's not just think that one or two years right let's think of a horizon because we have to work more let's say i'm not sure of how you have planned your future let's talk a horizon of 10 to 15 years right it's not that uh, i am learning this only gcp intermediate and i'm done right no it never helps you right you have to think on a horizon right if i learn this then what is the next step i need to learn and where do i see myself right uh then only you will be able to sustain right because the technology is changing very fast because when i started to learn i started with aws right and why i'll tell you i i also uh, learned and then got certified and then uh, into amazon and gcp also because now the trend again in, is one of the trend is gcp is coming up fast but the, apart from that right the another trend is it's a multi cloud structure that industry is now moving into right what do I mean by multi-cloud is, yes, they will be using AWS, but apart from that, they'll also be hosting some of their applications or workloads into one of the other cloud providers. It can be Microsoft, it can be GCP, uh, but Oracle are mainly used by uh, organizations who, who are dependent on Oracle Enterprise. That's a separate thing to ask, but multi-cloud is the new trend that is coming into, and you learning this, uh, different cloud platforms will give you a higher advantage there in the market and, and i believe me or not you will be on a very hard side when you are sitting for your interviews or when you're putting your resumes out right your knowledge will definitely be tested but your the short list of your resume will be very quick right if you have these skills on your resume that's what i can guarantee you of right so not, let's me not just go, go again ahead so this is the main advantage why you need to go ahead with GCP, I would say, for now, because it's picking up very fast. Okay, uh, so why GCP is one of the best cloud provider, as I told you, there are three most predominant used, AWS, Azure, and then GCP. So the, uh, you can take up GCP because it's the fastest growing now in the market. And advantages, few advantages of GCP over cloud providers is uh, it's innovative technology because I was telling you it has a very good capability of running ML workloads and then scaling those. Uh, that's one. And then scalability I've already talked about. Uh, then flexible pricing model is one of the game that they are playing into, giving very good deals to startups, right? Uh, when they are trying to pitch in and they want to use uh, their cloud provider of GCP, right? They're giving them very good. Uh, if they are committing to run workloads of three to five years, they're, they, they're uh, actually giving them very good uh, price models of let's say 70% 70, 70 of discount if they have gone into on-demand uh, workloads, right? So what is on-demand, what is committed? Uh, we, we I have separate design uh, topics, I would say, when we are doing this, but just to give you, uh, there's a person, I uh, he said that he's from non-IT, right? So what is on-demand is just, let's say I go to a shop, and I buy a laptop, right? That's my on-demand approach, right? But uh, what is committed is I go to that shop and I tell them, okay, you, I will buy laptops for next three years from you, right? Uh, let's say I have, or definitely I have a business or I have some things to follow. Let's keep that aside for now, just to help you understand is this is the requirement, right? Now, so now if the customer is going to GCP and telling, I will run workloads for ne next three hours, uh, three years. So, it's a business for both of them right and so that is the price model that they give you they give you instead of you buying it one time from them at and at, at quick right uh so they that 70 80 percent of discounts that they are giving up right and that's huge when uh, for startup industries right when they crunch for uh financials right so yeah and they have very good uh, customer support, 24 into seven. But again, these, this can be segregated into uh, different levels, but they do have very good customer support. <clears throat> uh, this is the price. Uh, if you just see with the other competitors, the VMs that they give you is uh, $0.475 per hour. I'll just 
just take a look at the numbers i won't tell much of it uh, for cloud sql standard storage load balancing these are the most things that are used and they give you very very good pricing advantage right okay uh this is the model that i was telling you speaking into it you with right uh, the sustained used discounts and committed use discounts and then what is preemptable vms preemptable vms says that's one thing it's just if you have used some other things it's just, just like spot instances or uh if i tell you on a high level it's just you give a price to your vms that you want to buy or the lap you give the laptop when you're visiting a shop you give the price a uh, shop owner a price that you want to buy the laptop so he will have mostly 10 to 15 other customers right and if your price is uh what i can say is advantageous for him to give you that so he will give you that uh, laptop it's it's it you will not give get it as a ownership of it but let's say think of it in term of rent right so uh, he will give you the laptop and let's say when he again re increases his price uh, in the next year and you don't want to you cannot match that so he'll take that laptop away from you this is on a high level but it, it's mostly what the exam analogy i've given you but it is a far more uh, i would say refined when you are uh, the the uh, explanation will a bit change but this is on if you can get, and think it think it off right it is preemptible vms and that does help you to save a lot of cost lot of cost i would say and then committed i already told you and then again sustained use discounts is actively using uh, gcp resources and that again does help you with saving costs right yeah I'll just quickly uh, go through okay uh, a few key uh, unique features of gcp that uh, that is getting utilized uh, gcp's uh, own brain project that's the ai ml part of it uh, the bard and all right and then stadia is one of the gaming uh, features uh, the next uh, way that you can use and there's third party data integration so it has uh, collaborated with nasa twitter the new york times to store their data right and uh, where i tell them tell you that they store their data it's more than 20 30 years of petabytes or terabytes of data right the huge amount of data that is getting stored and the cost if you if you if you do that calculation of the cost right if they have stored this data using their own infrastructure would have been huge right but using cloud uh, they they could have saved a lot of cost and not, not only cost right uh, it's think about the maintenance you would be requiring for uh, storing petabytes of data just think of that if you have a three story house right how much effort does go fr goes from you right if you have to maintain that house every year if you have to color it if you have, there is some leakage pipe seepage right you just think of that right and if you now think of that if i have taken it's not i have taken it's if you are living in a flat right only you have to think of if your flat right the, the environment or your complex is being managed by some other people right so it gives you a such good advantage of mental peace right okay my place is uh, clean and secured right i don't have to take that hassle only things i have to maintain is my own household things right so likewise right if you think of a client right having petabytes or let's say the new york times right they have petabytes or terabytes of data right if if i now means what they were earlier doing is they were storing it as well as they had engineers to maintain it right that's a huge thing to do but now they have they can only think of okay i need to store it there right and they are done with it right rest assured the data is taken care of and apart from that right there's a, a very good uh, thing that gcp does give you that they have an uptime of uh, 99 point nine nine right and it's the three nines that we talk into and uh, the cloud uh specs or cloud aspects right and it's a huge number i would say uh of giving you such a good uptime when you are using resources right the downtime is means negligible i would say for cloud storages and all so that's a very big advantage that you get into okay uh, uh, the ease of it uh, of using gcp services i have already covered cloud console so it's it's the ui that you will be getting and it's very self explanatory when you will be doing it and it's very easy to set up also 
apart from that you have a very good uh, marketplace where you can uh, find other solutions if you require uh let's say can uh, image uh, ami if you want to use you can take gcps or other my uh, marketplace providers and also if someone is trying to use it with sdks or software development kit let's say with some python code they want to uh, uh do the automation right so dcp does help you to do those things and also it has its own command lines of g cloud right you can also interact it with your from your terminals if you don't have the console to do right so yeah and then few case studies uh, what are the people are using and how they have benefited coca cola is one of the global brand that they have used and if you can see right 20% reduction in cost storage and uh, compute cost right so it's a huge for such a global brand right so colgate palmolive 60% in analytics query time right uh, people from data analytics and engineering will understand this right when they are running a query what is the thing it means query i mean big one two three pages of things right what is the challenge that go into right and then again the new new technology or new strengths of music that we see spotify right how has spotify uh, gone into so spotify was earlier using aws and then they have switched their load to gcp and then they saw a sharp reduction on cost and network latency right so net latency is one of the things that i was speaking you of right so spotify has uh, customers into all regions right uh, in the world right so how do those come into the picture yeah and then yeah we come to an end uh, of the things uh, and you feel free to ask me anything and also a few more things before we take up the q a right uh, first is i uh, reach out to your the admins they'll give you the structured syllabus that we have created for you uh, so that you can also take a look on that they'll send you is it blank screen appearing you were not able to see my screen sorry i am okay ah uh, the structured uh, course curriculum will be shared and we will be doing a mostly 40 60 ratio of um the course hands-on and theoretical yes theory is definitely required otherwise uh, if i do only practicals yeah, it will be very hard for you to understand right also when you are doing a recollect or revision you'll be not coming into at par with the things right so yes first i'll be explaining it and then we will be doing a hands-on either on your screens or on my screen that will be uh done and then also when you are starting to do that uh i'll be helping you to set up your uh cloud storage accounts so that we can start uh doing uh it all by our own hands right and gcp does give you those things where you don't have to take up much uh, pay from your pocket for the first 90 days so how that is done i'll help you to do that right okay and also please uh do drop your uh email ids and phone numbers in the chat right and then before you drop off and then now i open the session for q a if you have any please go ahead and ask hello uh yeah hi uh, akash so uh, can we get like separate uh, credentials for that lab uh, why? Because if you register like uh, a GCP site, like it's uh, most of the like uh, all the services won't we can we can't able to access. So is there any like uh, limitation? Is there or you are going to provide credentials any from the institute side or when it is like free, uh, like registration in the site itself? No, it I, I, I as far I am I am known. Uh, it will be on your own personal uh platforms right you'll be uh registering it on your systems so mm -hmm. uh, but i'll check once again if they do give you separate labs but as far i know of it it will be on your own systems and uh, if you say they don't give you it does give you a lot variety of things that you can use right now if you want to use a gpu or a tpu that i think will be chargeable right that's a huge thing that you're asking from them right but apart from that uh you'll be getting able to use most of the services yes okay 
so why because like it devops like a tecton like pub subs if you go with that everything is like chargeable i think it's a minimum charge that's why uh, we can't able to utilize those services even for that practices if you explain that's why i'm expecting like if we provide that uh, it's really helpful for us like to for the lab sessions mm -hmm. i'll check but yeah i'll check okay okay Thanks, Sakesh. Yeah, thank you, Surya. Any other question, guys? Guys, please drop your email IDs and uh, phone numbers in the chat. Any other questions, guys? Hello. Yeah, hi Akash. Uh, one question. Actually, you have described the monitoring uh, also in the as part of the course. We will define how to set up monitoring. Okay. Yeah. So okay. is it okay. going to cover like uh, configuring monitoring or something like a logging system or monitoring system or anything other than that uh, you are mentioning? Okay, uh, so it, it does cover, it will start from scratch, right? So it will start from what is region to data center to zones, and then it will c slowly pick up, right? Uh, infra, uh, implementing it, in, uh, then infrastructure it, right? And then how you design it, how you optimize it, and, and all aspects, right? Okay, it's similar to like up. how uh, AWS CloudWatch will be there, like similar uh, services. You are going to cover all this, okay right? okay you are asking in that aspect so yes aws yeah. cloudwatch is one of the monitoring tool that you use in aws yeah. like monitoring is again an aspect in gcp yeah. so you have gcp logging and all those yes that uh, monitoring okay. is again another aspect we will be taking in yeah log, yes, log log explorer kind of thing in GCP. yes correct we that's a uh, one part of the entire uh, course material uh, course structure that we have yes monitoring is one part Actually, we are using Log Explorer, but we don't know how to configure it. Everything is pre-configured in my project. Okay. Yeah, yeah. When you will be doing it, you will be configuring it right first base, and then we will be uh, uh, using it right. So yes, okay, you. you will be able to configure it. Yes. Any other question, guys? Yeah, one last question. Actually, are you going to cover uh, app engine also? Yes, yes. That's what that's yes. That's our predominant service that is that we'll be covering. Yes. Okay. Actually, we are using app engine for deployment. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Any other question, guys? Uh, okay, sure. Surya is here uh, again. So that yeah, monitoring yeah. you said like uh, we have a separate uh, uh, The topics is there, right? So are we going to cover like astronomer also as part of this? Cover sorry, I didn't miss, missed it. Astron no, astronomer uh, like uh, there's a monitoring. We have a monitoring tool with that like uh, uh, there is a uh like gcp they're providing like they have the terms in between like some few of them like uh, cloud product and uh, like monitoring purpose they're providing like uh, astronomer as a package so because like um, normal it's monitoring is different like to a uh, tool like integration uh, level when we integrate multiple services here so we can integrate everything in the astronomer so there we can easily track it all the integrations so as part of this sessions also we're covering that astronomer uh, monitoring uh, service also 
Ah, uh, no, that uh, I won't tell you. It is much covered over there. But uh, yes, we can. As I told you, these are few extra specific services. If you want, we can cover it in the later part of the course. But yeah, uh, apart from that, we yes, this is how we, I can answer you at this point. We'll be covering cloud trace, cloud provider, the inbuilt ones, uh, cloud lo logging, and all those. But yes, again, GCP Astronomer, as you say, right? It, it's it's work i guess with airflow and keda right so yeah it's it's an apache, apache one yes so maybe with this, these are few specific ones if you want we can cover it at the end of the course yeah okay okay and also dbt we have the integrations like kind of same terraform so that also it's uh, it's not part of uh, sessions so maybe that also Additionally, we need to cover, right? So, why? Because these are like not this inbuilt uh, services. Yeah. So, every custom services, it will be difficult, right? But yes, few we will be covering definitely based on your uh, requests and uh, up uh, what whatever requirements you have. Yes. Okay. Yep. Sure, Krish. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, just drop your email IDs and phone numbers in the chat, guys. And in, let's say in one or two minutes, if there is no more questions, we'll wrap it up, right? Any other question, guys? Okay, uh, maybe we are done for today. Uh, it was good uh, speaking with all of you guys and have a good day. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you, Akash. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.